Looking for the skills and training you need to get a new career? Call CTC, the Center for Training and Careers, and start working towards that new career today. Call CTC in San Jose. Good evening, I'm Siwapili Rose Amador and this is Native Voice TV. Welcome to the show. We have with us today some very interesting guests. We have an author, Manny Moreno, and you've been on the show before, but this is your second book. Welcome to the show. And also Lillian Valley, who wrote the introduction for the book. So welcome to both of you. Manny, why don't Thank you yeah. start uh, giving me your, your background, your Native background. Okay, I'll introduce my parents first. Uh, my mother and father were, they're gone now. Uh, their parents were Yaqui and Purapeche Taraskin. Uh, they came here in the early 1900s and settled in the San Joaquin Valley. Uh, we speak the language a little as a Yoeme Nooka, as Yaqui. So I'll say Kachamalea to everybody here. And uh, that means what? That means like happy to see you. Oh. Happy to see you. Tell us, how do you know Lillian? I met her at Three Rivers Lodge. And I used to ask her for books, you know, she'd bring books for donations. And there was a period there where I didn't see her, but I found her online. Her and another, uh, what's her name? Cleo. And uh, well, they took interest in my books and they helped me to get them published, go along and get them published. I think you can say more. Wonderful. Yeah. And Lillian, welcome to the show. Give us Thank a little you. bit of background of yourself. My own background is uh, I am Polish. My parents were displaced by World War II uh, and never went back to their country, never saw their families again. I was born in Germany in a DP camp and currently um, teach at Modesto Junior College. And it was through a student at Modesto Junior College who invited me to Three Rivers that I met Manny initially. And um, it was through a contact with Manny uh, through email and uh, actually reading first his poems um, and then some of his other works that got me interested in uh, at least having some of them reach publication. And you're, you've been somewhat involved in the Native community. I have. My uh, friend and colleague Rose Engstrom and I uh, started the Red Nations and Friends Club at the college and also began the powwows. They were very homegrown at the beginning mm -hmm. and yesterday was the 13th one. Eric Ivory has been the driving force behind them right, right now. Um, but uh, we were interested in doing that because it was the Columbus Quincentennial mm -hmm. and it seemed to us that um, Native people shouldn't be remembered just once a year or even one day a year, but uh, that we should try to integrate as much material about Native peoples into our curriculum. And you wrote a beautiful introduction for Manny's book, which was recently released, right, right. Uh, called The Elder that's here on the table. And I had the pleasure of reading it myself. And as you say, it's not too hard reading because you can get through it quickly, but it's right. very, very interesting. And why The Elder? Growing up, <clears throat> when we had elders, we always respected them. We always looked up to them. Well, I did, at least my grandfathers. And uh, they had this kind of wisdom that we never questioned when they made decisions on things that we wanted to get done or something. We trusted them. We always, uh, I love being around them, you know. When I met Harry and them, it was back in 19, early 80s. And they were younger and stronger, and um, Beaver. And I was at a recovery center, and Beaver Turner, the co-founder of Three Rivers. Now tell us what Three Rivers is, for those who do not know. Three Rivers Lodge began in the 70s. Uh, it was an alcohol, it's an alcoholic uh, substance abuse center for mm -hmm. Indian men. 
And that's in Manteca? Manteca, California. What happened was Beaver, the story goes that I have it, Beaver uh, was in and out of jail. He was living on Skid Row. Mm -hmm. And him and two other men would be in jail talking about helping their people. But every time they got out, they got drunk and back, back in, in the jail. <laughs> so they finally got straightened up and uh, they put together whatever means of uh, support they had and started this program. And it's been around now since uh, 1970s, uh, right around 76, 77. Mm -hmm. But they were instrumental at that time because there weren't many Indian uh, recovery centers around the time. Right. We had people coming from across the country, uh, I mean, South Dakota, Arizona, California, all over. And what these men did was they gave their time and they dedicated themselves. And that was the thing that I learned from them. They made a commitment to help people. Mm -hmm. They didn't just talk. You know, we have people today, uh, a lot of young people that look at the elders that's obsolete or not being beneficial to understanding the way things are today. But they probably haven't been around their elders that much. Because if they did, they wouldn't be talking like that. And I've mm -hmm. seen a lot of this lately. They were really, uh, when we got in trouble, they didn't quote consequences or punish us or banish us. What they did was they corrected us and helped us to see how to live in a better way. If it wasn't for the guidance of these elders, I wouldn't be sober today. I don't think that because when I met them, at first they were really hard on me because I was in my 20s. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I would. There were days where I want to wring their necks, you know, <laughs> in my mind. Of course, I wasn't. I wasn't going to do that in front of them. But towards the end uh, of Harry Jack's life, I remember. Uh, in my memory, in my mind, all the things they did to help us. And I've told people that there was a report made last week that 21 million uh, elder Americans suffer neglect or abuse. Mm. You know, when they get old, I, I, and this was my experience with them, when they got older, people didn't come around them no more. And I thought, what a way to give thanks to these men who helped a lot of people. When I wrote this book as a tribute, I wanted people to remember them. You know, I didn't know where I was gonna go with the book. And I just, when I started with it, she said, just start. And I didn't know how to start. I just said, well, I started going back in my memory. Mm -hmm. Harry did this or that. The, other so the, the book focuses on Harry Jack. I mean, you, have, you mentioned different right. people in, in the book, but it focuses on Harry Jack and um, your relationship with right. him, how you met him, how he influenced you right. over the years. And just give a little bit of background. Now, I know you, mm -hmm. you mentioned something about his, he seemed grouchy at times. And I, I've noticed right. that with my, um, with my mom, with my stepdad, she was always such a easygoing person, yeah. you know, all her whole life. Yeah. And, and you know, and now she's kind of you know grumpy sometimes. And and her um, her husband used to be just the nicest, easygoing person. Mm. Now he's grouchy yeah. all the time. So I don't know if it has something to do with you know getting up there or what, or just you know the aches and pains. But they still have a lot of wisdom, right. a lot of knowledge, and you know the compassion to share. And and tell us a little bit about Harry Jack. Well, when I first met Harry, he was known to be pretty hard. I didn't realize, but over the years, we uh, locked horns all the time. And when I came to Three Rivers to work, he considered that his territory, his domain, because he had done so much work there. Now, did he work there or he just volunteered there? He was a he volunteer, but he was like the elder in residence, you mm -hmm. know. The, the men, whenever the elders came around the lodge, I noticed that the men, a lot of them out of prison from the reservations, were really tore up, you know. But when the elders would show up, a whole different atmosphere took place. The elders would take the sage, the tobacco, you know, and the mm -hmm. fire, and they would talk. And sometimes we didn't understand them because Harry spoke Navajo or Dene, but um, 
when they were around, it sort of balanced everything out. If there was anger or something going on, mm -hmm. their presence coming in, there was something about them walking in a room that drove everybody to go. And we listened to them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Harry, uh, he was a ceremonial prayer man. He was a black wolf gourd uh, prayer man. He would always go to powwows and say the prayers of Navajo. He was a sweat lodge leader. And uh, him having that knowledge, you gotta remember he was born in the early 1900s. And he spoke about his grandparents, so it tells me that uh, his father and mother were born in the 1800s. And he knew his grandfather, so he had to be wow. born way back. So those elders in that generation saw the changes of their people. Mm -hmm. when it became the reservation system, uh, the laws that applied to them, the, uh, the religious uh, denial to exercise their, their rights, uh, that didn't come uh, for the Indian until the 1978, I think it was, the American Indian Religious Freedom Act. So, but these men kept these ceremonial ways alive at a time when Indians weren't allowed to worship openly. And so, that was another thing that their lives, I could only imagine what they went through in their struggle to survive and to keep those things alive. And here they were passing them on to us. And that was the thing I understood because I'm getting older now that all these things they were teaching us was just a continuation to keep mm -hmm. them alive. To keep, we weren't to be great spiritual leaders. We weren't going to be all these things. We were just to pass on the knowledge. Pass it on to the younger people. And uh, when I was young, I was really hard-headed. I don't want to say that about myself, but I was. I was hard-headed. And so I was never involved with anything. It was Harry that, uh, towards the end, I guess he believed I was ready to, to take some responsibilities. So they passed responsibilities on to me, and I didn't want them, because I figured it, it's, it's a heavy load to carry. Now I know what they were carrying. It was hard for them because people didn't agree in their methods of teaching us. But see, we, in our generation, I think, we think by being taught, we sit here like a schoolroom and we're being instructed with, it may just be sitting around a fire like this and just waiting around. And if they say something, you listen to them or in the church or in the lodge, they may say, oh, grandfather's taking care of us today. <laughs> what, what is he trying to say? You know, it, well, it seems <laughs> like in reading the book that he drew you in without you even knowing it for yeah. a long time. That was the whole thing because see, I couldn't understand why he was so hard on me. And so, you know, I thought, well, I guess he doesn't like me but because he could see through me uh -huh. that I was, I was walking around with all this bull, they call it, or craziness. And I wasn't, uh, I wasn't balancing my life. You know, I was in and out, running around, get sober for a little while, get drunk again, mm -hmm. get in trouble, come back to sweat. Oh, I'm sorry, I need help. You're sick in the mind, you know? You don't want to give up that stuff. But, uh, the, the, the good thing about Harry helping me was, it wasn't just me, it was a lot of other people, but he saw something, I guess, you know? And um, I think if he would have been here today, every time I see the cover on the book, mm -hmm. I still get the chills because I think Harry's looking at me <laughs> to see if I'm doing okay, you know? And so, yeah, he had that kind of uh, impact on me. There, you know, my grandfather had impact on me and people like that, but as a man, to have an elder like this man uh, have that impact that's going to be the rest of my life. I didn't want them to be forgotten. So that's why I wrote this book, you know. Uh, I think we have young people today that are going around and they're not sure of their own Indianism. They're, 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 they're kind of uh, taking it upon themselves to create uh, this life way, they call it. But in the ceremonies, the way they've always been done, 
is the way they should be continued mm -hmm. because they worked. I've told people, you know, these elders, uh, Beaver was a World War II uh, veteran, Silver Star. A lot of those men were veterans. Harry was in the service too. He talked about Germany, he said he used to go, hi Hitler, Germany. He remembers all that, you know. Mm -hmm. But to know what they've been through, because they were very uh, direct, really, they didn't play around, you know. They, they, they really, they didn't have time to waste on us. So <clears throat> out of all those guys, at the end of their lives, uh, the last time I saw Beaver was uh, the week he died. He came to talk to me at Three Rivers, and I was thinking of quitting. And he, boy, he straightened up, and he looked at me and says, you can't quit. This ain't about you or me or any one person. That's about perpetuating the spirit of this place. Mm -hmm. And that's what they were involved in, in the sobriety movement. Their whole lives were dedicated to helping Indian people live sober. And that's, uh, that was their mission. That was what they took on, their commitment. And wow. so, you know, with all of that uh, experience, I feel really richer now, you know? I, I feel really good because... I understand that. <coughs> now, Lillian, <coughs> you wrote the intro. What compelled you to write the intro for the book? And, and Manny did say you helped him a lot <coughs> getting this published because it's very difficult to get books published. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I was interested in it, I think, number one, uh, because I grew up without grandparents, without any old people. Mm -hmm. And it's a tremendous hunger that I still have for old people. And I would tease Manny when we were working on the proofs, and I would say, well, when I get old, I'm just going to have my kids drive me out to the Thule's and leave me there, because uh, I live in the Central Valley. And uh, he said, uh, he would say very seriously, how are they going to learn patience? And I think what we're missing in a lot of our culture is the restraint and the patience that you learn from older people and dealing with their infirmities. Mm -hmm. There was a Miwok man once that talked to a group that visited in Yosemite Valley and they do a big trek across the Sierra Nevada. And the young people were really impatient because the old people were doing it and they were slow. And he said, we go as fast as the slowest elder. That's as fast as we go. And there's, there's a lot that you learn in that. Uh, also, um, for all the, the crankiness, um, uh, the California Indians call that the elder hammer. You know, they're, they're, they're teaching you things by battering you a little <laughs> bit. Uh, so there are many, many things that drew me to it, but it's a story. I, I was driving when I was deciding, you know, whether we should put all the resources and the effort into doing this book, and I was driving along the Merced River, and it was ripped rap. It was just awful looking. And there were all these vineyards and you know big tanks of fermenting wine. And I thought, what what do we have against these powerful forces, right? We have little tiny books. That's that's all we have. We have the stories, mm -hmm. we have the memories, we have the small books, and we have to lay those down to face you know all the big uh, powerful forces that don't want people to do well that that bring them down. So. That was what swayed, swayed me to, to participate in this. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, Manny, you play flute. Can you play a song for us? I'm not a good flute player, but oh, I'll Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> Can we dedicate this to Harry Jack? Oh. And my friend Ross Gritz. Oh, and, yeah. And Dr. Daryl Babe Wilson. I was telling you about him earlier. Right. Uh, Ross, I remember Ross. Uh, he was he was a good man. Yes, he was. He was always kidding me. He was always kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> always. <laughs> Yeah, he, he was a good man. Uh, I'll try something here.
you very mm -hmm. much. Now, how can someone order this book? You have a website, don't you? Yeah, um, I didn't send you the... We'll put it on the okay, uh, screen, yeah. but if you could just kind of That's, tell us. Uh, Monoline Manny Moreno, uh, YolaSite.com. And you can order also through the Back 40 uh, Publishing. Mm -hmm. you can too. It's a great book. I would highly recommend it. Um, very interesting reading. And what advice would you give our youth? Well, you know, we're living in a generation, I think, in times we live in, where that word respect doesn't have the meaning or the power that it used to. That's what it is. And so my thing would be help your elders. Take care of them, you know. Uh, they're only going to be here a short time. Mm -hmm. This is the continuation of life. We learn respect. We learn those things be, because we're taught them mm -hmm. by our parents or grandparents. And it's going to come a point when the children that come after us are going to need some guidance. We don't want them in the prisons no more. We don't want them on Skid Row. We don't want them running around lost, you know. When you look at Indian country today, there's so much domestic violence and alcoholism and all these things. And that came from the cultural trauma, and I call it cultural genocide. It was perpetuated to destroy these life ways, these important things these elders carried with them, the ceremonial ways, the prayers. Uh, all these old ways were meant in this world for the Indian people to live in spite of the changing uh, way they try to put on the Indian people, taking away this stuff, that these elder ways, we call them the old ways, were to live, if you can't live in that world in a good way, the least you have this to fall back on. And those were the teachings of the elders. You know, the patience comes that way when you want to get a lodge together, you got to chop the wood, you got to do all these things. And the enemy that these men were trying to uh, take away from us was alcohol and drugs. And so if there's anything for the young to learn is that it, go look for the elders because they're in their homes a lot of times. They don't have the means to get out and they want people around them. And, and Include them in your ceremonies, include them in your gatherings. You know, when we go to the powwows now, you have young people doing the invocations, but yet there are elders sitting around. We have older people, but we don't necessarily have, uh, they're not necessarily elders. The elders are those who teach and help us, but they also, you know, they, without them, these life ways will disappear. You know, they're over here at, was it Glen Cove right now? Mm -hmm. And that place there, what they're actually doing, that's an elder. That sacred site is an elder because it goes back to the old times. And it's important that they're taking care of that too. You know, the cultural genocide has really done a damage across this country and this continent. And so men like this should be remembered always for the work they do to help people. And so I, I, I feel re really honored, you know. Uh, David here too, he's a candidate for the Black Wolf Gore Society. And David is our photographer for Native Voice TV. Right, right. and, uh, and uh, Harry Jack brought me in. I, I didn't want to, and when he brought me in, he had just crossed over right after that. Mm -hmm. And these guys were telling me, you gotta get in. I didn't want to be in it, and they said, you got to uh, do it for Harry. I think we're almost out of time, okay. but I want to thank you both okay. for being here. Okay. And we're going to end with a flute song. Oh. But before that, I want to mm. remind you that the Indian elders have a monthly potluck, and that's always the third Saturday of each month. And for information on that, you can contact Al Cross at 294-0519. And we'll have that number up on the screen, but that's monthly. But there's these activities going on all the time where you can help the elders out, you know, mm -hmm. take them to the elder luncheon, or you don't have to be an elder to be there. Um, they enjoy everyone's company. So mm -hmm. thank you for, make, for writing this okay. book. Thank you for helping Lillian. Okay. And thank you both for being here. Thank okay. you for joining us. Mm -hmm. And we'll end with this song. I just want to see if 
pretty rad. And when they end this, this goes up to our elders in prayer, in the Yaqui language, you don't hear. Vitom chaitek we kan ka te kame, unte guam che egu asuyu yima, yemitom yeho sama, emiragu and balepo inimwe a kwangwa, man te we ka pongwa ben mate ui, bo yem yasi toma mika, sorry to ma itaria, kala itom ah, itaria me, itom bulil e konte kote yamaka, when I could cheer for so, cheer money, Tom, you read to a neck at Turin, Betana. Mm Ah. Uh -huh.